guys, welcome back to Sundays Today. Today is a special video because it's Father's Day. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. I feel like you've been practicing. <laughs> All right. My name is Bola Dina. This is Mac, the father. You, the father. I was going to say, do we call you the celebrant? Um, and the patriarch. Then, the patriarch of the family. Okay. And then, Emily, who do you have with you? I'm Emily with my brother, my siblings, Nubia and I'm the woman. Um, we're also part of this family, and we work behind the scenes to get these videos yeah. out on time. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Father's Day! Thank you. Yay! Mm. I, <laughs> I gave my dad this necklace. So we wanted to do a special edition of Some Days Today because... It's Father's Day, and I think we have an amazing dad that these lucky these kids are lucky to call their father. So wanted to um, get on screen and talk. Number one, what Father's Day means to you, but I also thought it would be good to have you guys ask your dad some questions. Um, so you guys have pro um, what's the word? You guys have prepared a question or two to ask that, and then I also have some questions for you. So it's gonna be fun. Um, Let's dive into it, shall we? All right, so how's your day going thus far, Mac? Awesome. Very good. So how about you guys go down and talk about um, what you did for dad and um, how it was received, Amini. Okay, so so can I start what I did last night? Yeah. Okay, so last night, I, I I was I forgot I was just watching TV but I forgot about Father's Day so I just started up and I asked Nubia if we should make a rap song for him and then we were like yeah let's do it and then we changed our mind because no one was cringing and so we started so I made a <laughs> so I made a letter and it had um if I could show you look at the audience um oh. okay. We'll take a picture of it and um, make it seem okay. Will we? Is that not it right there? One of them. Okay. Yeah, this is it. So here, here, here was the front. Here, Why are you walking like the that? Back. Take your time to read. <laughs> Take your time to read it. Um, All right. Um, so I also made this necklace and this um, bracelet and his favorite colors. That's really good, Amy. You um feels like you put a lot of heart into it. I really like the necklace. It's yeah, really pretty. Like bracelet matches my shirt right now. Bracelet matches your shirt. Very good. So do you like your gifts, Mac? Love it. Very good. So the kids did. So Emily did a good job. Awesome. Very awesome good. job. What about you, Nubia? Oh, okay. uh, so I made a card as well. That's over here, and uh, it's just like some drawings of my dad. <laughs> it's beautiful. Beautiful. It looks. Just like him too. Let me put it next to him. Except yeah, she face. chopped off the top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> Just like him too. Nubia, you're such an artist. I was telling you yesterday, you're such an artist. Yeah. Um, we should frame that. And then Nuwaman. Um, well, uh, I, well, I started um yesterday. I started like making a song, but I um, but it was based off a different song. I can sing it right now, but um, it was really um, yeah, you yeah. Uh, you I'll sing it. But after, but I also uh, made my dad breakfast because I uh, really think he um, likes my cooking. So I just I made him. I asked him what he wanted, and he said he wanted waffle. Uh, he wanted like a bunch of waffles, so I just made him waffles. Nice. So wait, I made food for you this morning. So you ate that as well. Yeah. Nice. So you like Norman's cooking? Is yeah. that what you said? Yes. Nice. Very good. Norman's a uh, great baker. He is a great baker. Yeah. You're like the cook of the family. All right. Good. Sure. So. 
the chef. Um, so this is great. So um, you guys had very thoughtful gifts, uh, and I'm sure your dad really appreciates it. So how's your day going so far? So far, so good. So far, so good. So really what I want to ask is I kind of want to take it back to kind of what being a father means to you. Because um, I think it's such a personal journey. And a lot of times children may not even understand, you know, all the things that we as parents think about. So what does being a father mean to you, especially in this day and age? Like, do you take any time to think about you know, your parenting, what do you do on Father's Day and how do you sort of process what it means to be a dad on this day? On this day, <clears throat> what do I do? I don't do anything on this day. I <laughs> chill. Um, yeah, I relax on this day, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, what does it mean to be a father? Um, to you, it, to what does me, being a father mean to you? Well, yeah, to me, being a father is what you do on every other day or every day i suppose what does it mean to be a father i guess is to um impart whatever lessons that you have so that your children are better than you hmm. so that's um that's your goal as a father yep mm. so what are some of your favorite goals that you're looking to impart on your children and i guess before you answer that i wonder if the children um can guess some of your favorite lessons uh, or the ones that you harp on. What do you mean? Um, well, I'll go. With, I'll start with Nuamin. So, Dad says that what it, what fatherhood means to him is you know teaching you guys, instilling some principles, some values into you guys. Um, so, if you were to think about um, something that's top of mind for him, what do you think one of his favorite lessons or principles um, is? Um, I think a principle. I think. Um... The first thing that comes to mind would be like just at least like trying to do something like not even like not um just um giving up or like not um not acting like it's a it's a hard thing like you just have to at least try to put something together or at least work to make something uh good uh before you give up because it's because if you don't then it's like you don't know what you could have had. I think I feel like that's um, a lesson that uh, he's imparted on me. Nice. So putting forth an effort. Yeah. Even when it seems difficult. Yeah. Very good. What about you, Nubia? The um that you have to be brave even if you don't want to do it. So and also like if you're not brave, and and you're like making excuses about not to do it, why you should do it, then you should still do it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. We used to have, or you used to have um, something called um, Stupid Brave Tuesday, or what is it called? Brave Stupid Day. Brave yeah. Stupid Day. Like every, yeah, what uh, is that? Thursday? Like, he um, he was like... It wasn't just, every Thursday. I don't know. It was, it was like the 17th of, month. Month. yeah, the month. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like 17th, like, okay. Mm -hmm. And was, what was it? He just said, go out and do something, like, that would be crazy, like, spontaneous. Just go out and do something that you don't normally do. And, um, and yeah, just make a, make a day of it. Mm-hmm. Did you guys um, ever try to do that? Yeah, we did that every day. We not, I mean, every, not day. every day. We, we did, did that all the. We when, did. We when, used to do when it the like, day was. Yeah. Uh huh. When the day was. Yeah. What are some of your favorite, or some of the ones that stood out to you, and why did you do that for Brave uh, Stupid Day? I remember. Um, remember those glasses that I got from Chuck E. Cheese, and they're like big. The like big this. ones. Uh huh. Well, I took those to school, and we passed them around like the whole eighth grade. Mm. Oh, that's cute. What about you, Nuana? Um, I remember um, one time uh, I was just in school and um, I hadn't really like, like it, it was like I was staying after school for like um, a science thing, right? And um, I wasn't I wasn't really like going to talk to anyone, but then I was just like, what if I just like tried to get involved into some stuff? And so I just went around and I had a good time, and I it, during that day it was yeah it was fun. Interesting. So you said try to get into some sort of like some after school activities yeah. or okay. Okay, cool. And you thought about being brave and you know, doing something even if it's gonna make yeah. you look stupid to do it. Yeah. Very good. And what about you, Amy? Um, I don't really remember doing a very stupid day actually. I don't even know what it is. And uh, but <laughs> um well I So that's fine. What's your favorite lesson that daddy has taught you so far? 
Or one that you remember, even if it's not your favorite. Um, well, I um, love to, like, try to find, like, like if something, like, bad happens and you feel, like, miserable or something, like, try to, like, um, find a strategy and, and before you give up, like, find strategies and, yeah, stuff like that. Very good. So it's kind of similar to what Nuamin is saying in that don't give up. So if something bad happens or something is difficult, try to figure out a way to find a solution Yeah. to do it. Very nice. Do, do those sound um, familiar to you, Meg? Yeah, they sure do. Yeah. Does it make you feel like they're listening to some of the lessons you're trying to teach? Yeah. So, um, you know, so I, my post on Instagram was to my dad, who I said um, gave me the blueprint. And his whole thing was also about making his kids better than he is, um, you know. And he always had some nice little lessons. And uh, I think um, he definitely imparted on us lessons that he had. I mean, for the most part, he was like most, um, I would say immigrant, but probably a whole bunch of different parents whether immigrant or not who were focused on education and so he pushed us hard on education and so all of um his siblings um siblings all of his children um of which he had seven <laughs> i'm getting all of that right so we all graduated from college um you know um because that was one of his biggest things i mean he had a lot of things but that was one of his biggest things so i always felt like you know um imparting important lessons is very important and i think for me it has changed you know i was focused on education as well but it has changed as i've grown and um am growing i think i know that one of the biggest things for me um and this is probably true of a lot of parents is that you know um your kids make you better because you are looking to try to make them better and so you're trying to understand your own issues mm -hmm. So as I've been growing and learning, I've, it's been changing. And so definitely the um, courage thing, go out and do stuff, very, very important. Don't, you know, don't look at, quote, failure, or I like to use the words setback instead of failure. Don't um, allow that to hold you back. Um, the whole entire thing about, you know, people will remember your successes, not your failure. Um, a lot of people that we look at, you don't see all the things that they are doing in the background. Um, you don't see anything all the, all the times that they fail. So that's a big, big piece for me. You know, recently we've been, um, you know, getting into our own journey. So like we've been trying to impart those on them as well. Um, those lessons that we're learning about ourselves, um, you know, our... Uh, egos and things like that so you know we have them read books but definitely i think you know the idea of trying the idea of um coming up with ways to get around obstacles very big yeah very good so in addition to what they've listed what are some of the values or principles that you're hoping to instill in them or that you would like for them to remember and i know we have a wall of values um that you know at least um for a long time we would go around the dinner table and pick one value for the day and talk about it but what are some of the um values and principles either more recent ones that you've developed or lifelong ones that um you're looking to impart on the children um, I mean, I think the, the, the biggest part is, is the kind of things that they talked about. I think ultimately, well, there's two really big things that, um, I think I focus on. Um, one is gratitude. Mm. So at the table we do our gratefuls, like, you know, obviously people do, um, prayers, um, before they do their eating and, you know, it's very much the same thing, like, but just remind, rem remembering how grateful you are. I read forget who it was I said it. I think it might have been um, one Instagram follower uh, a person who I follow manifesting your vision who said there is no such thing as sadness or anything like that or you know those, those sorts of emotions is really being ungrateful mm. because ultimately you can always look back look at what you do have and be like yeah I have this like worry and all these other things it's just a lack of being ungrateful 
Because hmm. whenever you um, look at certain things, you're you're you know, and you're focused on the bad things as opposed to all the wonderful things. It's because you're not focusing on the wonderful things. All the good things you have going for you. Yeah, yeah. and that's that's natural. Like if like if simple example is like if you're um, in a hurry. Your every light that you stop at, it's like, oh my god, all the damn lights are red, mm. and then you missed like all the previous three green lights mm -hmm. that you. Or that you have been. a working car. You're not <laughs> yeah, on the bus. All that stuff. <laughs> you know, like you um, could be on a bus, right, New Amen? I'm forced to. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, it's like when you are remembering these sorts of things, and you know, you're not focused on the bad things. But anyway, um, so grateful, being grateful, because you know, everybody says that or less um, research shows that that's one of the ways to be happy. Mm -hmm. And that's a big thing for me, people being, you know, our kids being happy. And then, um, you know, and then the next part, like one of the biggest things is again, not um, is doing something like, you know, not focusing on your, what you're feeling at the moment and getting, you know, just going and doing, you are what you do, know what you feel. Mm -hmm. Like that's the thing with the ego. Like you re realize that. Yeah, um, shit done. Well, more than anything, it's about um, the stories that we tell ourselves that create these emotions. Mm. I mean, it's the same thing with being ungrateful in, a, in essence, but it's more like, okay, now I'm feeling this way because I'm feeling this way must mean that this who is who I am. When in fact, no, that's not who you are. It's a story that you created. It's this persona that, you know, life has helped you to say about yourself. And so you go on and behave or act based upon those beliefs those mm. stories and you end up not doing the things that you could do that make you happy so um you know don't focus on those sorts of things this is the biggest thing and like going out and doing you know and um trying and uh not being scared or putting mechanisms in place so when you're feeling a certain way so that you can actually do do it anyways yeah. All right, great. So we're at the segment where we, we get <laughs> we get to take turns and ask um, Dad a question. So you've all prepared a question. I have a couple of questions as well. Um, but so, Emily, did you want to go first, or do you want Nuamin to go first? No, I just wanted to say that I thought we were only answering. No, no. You were only what? I thought we were only saying the questions. Yeah, yeah, you guys are going to ask the questions, and then Daddy is going to answer. Okay. Okay. All right, Nuamin, so what's your question for Daddy? Um, so I was, I just wanted to know, um, what's the best piece of advice you've gotten over the years? And, yeah, dude, what's, what's the best piece of advice you've gotten over the years? Or, like, the most helpful? From anyone? Yeah, from anyone. Like, even books? Um, I guess books, too. Like, I guess we could do a book in a person. Like, hmm. Maybe from Grandpa. From his dad. Um, all right, so let's start with a book because <laughs> I'd have to sit and think back about what my dad said other than what I've already said. Um, you know, um, I would say the best advice that I've gotten from a book. Um, you know, um, probably has to do with the um hot yoga type of thing i would say um you know i would say that part of what i would hope you guys learn when i say go out and try and when i say um don't worry about failure is to um not run away one of the things that i feel like um i've done one of the things that um you know one of my defense mechanisms was to run away from things like you know if i don't if i'm feeling uncomfortable then i'd be out like i can give some sort mm -hmm. of reason that um i shouldn't be there go ahead man okay some sort of reason that i shouldn't be there mm -hmm. um that you know i justify it in one way or another and so um i'd always just figure out a way to run away but um you know just sticking in there trying it feeling the discomfort going through it until you get to the other side um until you've mastered it i think that's the biggest piece um and silly like that's probably the biggest lesson that you guys should probably take away is like you know um yeah go through the, the what is seemingly painful and more importantly 
is to relish it, not look at it as a problem, but say instead, wow, I'm feeling uncomfortable. That must mean I'm growing. I'm learning. If I am now feeling completely comfortable, this is this means that I have like I need to move on. Like I've mastered this stage that I'm at right now and that's not good. And in fact, you know, look at it sort of like a roller coaster where it's kind of like, all right, oh yeah, because I'm in this uncomfortable stage, it's like, okay, this is what makes it exciting. And that's why people do go to movies and scare themselves, or roller coasters and scare themselves, is because you're looking for that excitement. Oh, which reminds me too of another um thing that I think it was Tim Ferriss that said, you know, the um excitement essentially like long story short to condense whatever he said it's like excitement is really what we're looking for when we're talking about being happy like we're trying mm. to be excited you know the opposite of um f- uh fun is basically boredom um or not happy is basically boredom tim ferris he wrote um before our work week so when you think about that um when you are sitting here when we think like the only ty- types of excitement that we think is when we're running around playing um but the truth is that it's it's always because of the uncertainty of whatever it is that you're doing that um, makes it exciting. So you have to relish that. And what was the second part? Oh, yeah. What, um, so from my grandpa. From um, your dad. Yeah, from my dad. Um, from my the dad. The greatest piece of advice from your dad. Yeah. Um. There was a lot of, my dad worked a lot, which is what his contribution was to us. So, um, like, there's a lot of great characteristics that he had that he, unfortunately, was not able to pass on to me. But because he did work a lot and, you know, um, he allowed me to be able to to, to, um, do that with my own children. But I would say that maybe if what I would say is, um, you know, like, I think my dad is definitely a person who made friends and he always um, tried to push me to, you know, make friends and make and maintain, make and maintain and and nourish friendships. Um, Like I said, I don't think that was something that, um, you know, I recognized the value of until much later, but that's definitely something that he did, you you know, but he focused more on the education more than anything. So, I I mean, I guess. If I really were to say the most impactful is probably his insistence on education. Um, I remember when I first met you, you, I remember you said your dad used to tell you strike while the iron is hot. That always stood to me, stood out to me. No, that wasn't a main. I don't remember that. That That was your dad. My dad's calling me right now. Um, The question. Your question. Yeah. The question that I asked was, um, what's your earliest memory? Hmm. Interesting. My earliest memory. Um, I remember early memories. I'm trying to see if I have one before that. I have uh, not a, memories. Like I remember a lot of. I don't know what was earlier though. It was like back when I was in Haiti. I remember, um, you know, um, for whatever reason, like when people used to smoke cigarettes. Um, they used to be like, hey, here's a cigarette. Throw it away for me. <laughs> and I want to go be like, okay. And then you <laughs> no, smoked it. Yeah. When it's kind of like we have really, really good kids because I could be like, here, try this drink here. No. Nope. <laughs> Whereas people would be like, throw away the cigarette. All right, oh, it's my opportunity. But why Let me see what... give you a cigarette to throw away? I don't, have no seeing just, idea. Then they just... Put it out and put it on the table. I mean, I'm just confused. What it, <laughs> so they call you to come throw away their cigarettes. Pretty much. Or something oh like God. that. I have Parents no idea exactly God. what it is. <laughs> <laughs> you should know. I should know. <laughs> but um, what else? Uh, I remember there was a fire at one point. Maybe it's because I had a cigarette and I didn't properly throw away. I don't know. <laughs> you caused a fire? <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember. I have to ask my brother. Um <laughs> Because he, he would remember that fire. It probably was him. He was a mischievous kid. Uh, he'll tell you, too. Uh, Wallace. Um, really? Yeah. <laughs> Real? Wow. Yeah. That's hilarious. Like he's they think dead. Wallace is square now. Yeah. But, yeah, he was a mischievous kid <laughs> when he was growing up. Uh, and then um, what other memories do I have? Um, some that I will not recall recount to you because they were kind of bad. But there is, um, 
uh, one where when we were about to um, come to the United States, um, I remember we used to have black and white TVs and we used to watch the Incredible Hulk, Lou Ferrigno on there. And, um, you know, he was just gray to us. We never realized that he was green <laughs> until I got to the United States and had the color TV and saw that he was green. I used to have him on the um, on our lunch boxes though and saw that, you know, he's supposed to be green. But anyways, um, there was this kid um, who was in school who I used to cheat off of. <laughs> <in school>. <laughs> You're <laughs> evil. <laughs> so I used to cheat off of him. And, you know, when I was about to go, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to New York and uh, you better let me cheat. If you don't let me cheat, I'm going to talk to the Incredible Hulk, going to have him come down, <laughs> going to beat you up. <laughs> Boy was crying. What? <laughs> 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 Do you believe it? Be we, like, we were like, yeah, six years old. Five, so, six, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, he, was, he believed it. You're yeah. evil. <laughs> Uh, but those are some of the, uh, memories that I had when I was, I also actually probably even earlier than that. I remember, um, my grandma, right before she passed and then after when, when she passed my grandma. So that was that, that probably is my earliest, my grandma. The I just remember. Yeah. And how did it, not even how feel? she looks or anything like that. Um, not, I don't, mm, I just remember the, that, that the was a thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The event. Yeah. Mm, gotcha. Cool. What about you, Amini? What's your question for Daddy? My question is. <laughs> my question is, um, did you, did you like ever get in trouble when you were little? Did Daddy ever get in trouble? trouble? Did Daddy, trouble? Did Daddy ever trouble. get in trouble when he was little? Yeah. And what was the trouble? Yes, that's a good one. Uh, like how little are we talking? Cause like when you're a kid, like so ten and younger. Ten and younger. Ten, 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 ten. Okay, ten would be in um elementary. What's that? Fourth? Fifth. Fifth grade. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure. So again, like let's be um clear. My parents. Well, my mom was still um either in Canada or in Haiti. So it was me living with my um siblings and my dad and my dad basically worked two jobs he'd go leave at six come back at noon so um you know we basically were parenting ourselves like you know my oldest brother um ro was basically like our um father Designated in essence parent. yeah and <laughs> you know thankfully and how you know, old was he at the time shit um if i was how many years 10, older than you? i don't even know Okay. What? <laughs> That's bad. Uh, I don't. I don't Maybe know at this point. Five or six years. Uh, probably, okay. So I mean, obviously, it looked a lot. Yeah, it's probably a lot less now that you're we're both older, but it seemed like a huge gap when you were younger. Mm -hmm. So, um, I don't know if he was in high school at the time when I was in middle school because I. I mean, he probably maybe he was a freshman. I have no. Mm -hmm. I don't. I have to go back and see. But um, yeah. I mean, but you know. I think part of what um, my dad did well was, you know, raise him with good values because, you know, he was passing it down. But also, like, you know, whenever he had the chance, like it was like meaningful quality, you know, like now let me impart these little tidbits, which is what I do, mm. um, which is where I get it from. It's like, here's my little tidbits. Um, and education was definitely always one of those things. And, you know, our value and what we could be was always one of those things. And so, um, but anyways, so getting in trouble was something that was rare in our ability to, to get in trouble because, you know, letters would come home, get access to the letter. He never finds out about it. There wasn't no cell phone, so they weren't calling on cell phones. It's like, you call home. Nobody, we're home. Oh, okay, nice. Oh, Thanks for telling good. me. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> no and, emails. <laughs> yeah, and, and, you know, so, like, it was so weird. Like, I mean, I, I did a lot of crazy little things, but um, but I don't know that I was ever really in trouble until I was a little older, maybe middle school. Hmm. You so. never went to the principal's office? Yeah, how, I mean, just, oh, you mean trouble with the the teachers? 
Well, I both. mean, yeah, well, we had Yeah, that's why I would get letters sent home. So, oh, so you never went to like the principal's offices. I did. He oh. got he he found himself in trouble, but he never got in trouble with his parents. Right. And that's the like real trouble. Said, I mean, trouble with the principal the, wasn't anything. Yeah. Who cares yeah. being in trouble with the principal? <sighs> it's when your parents find out that then, like they come in and tell you, yeah. "Okay, yeah, you got to sit in the principal's office." Oh, nice. I got some time out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, it could be boring, but that's not real trouble. When your parents find out is when you're really in trouble. Mm. So, yeah, I got in trouble with teachers and principals. My parents just never found out. Mm. Why? You should tell your parents. Yeah. You should okay. tell your parents. If you guys get in trouble, make sure you tell your I parents. Well, I won't that. tell you. I don't think we're going to do that. Well, um... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you so, should do your um, high school trouble, too. Yeah, well, okay, so what troubles did you find yourself in in high school? High school? And middle school. Uh, so middle school, I don't know if I should be telling you guys all of this oh, stuff. Yep. Was, Hi. High school was, I probably shouldn't be telling y'all about any of that either. I don't know if we should be talking about this. Nope. <laughs> tell it. Nope. Let's tell confer it. later. <laughs> no, I do remember, so once again, I mean, I could be making this up because I felt like that whole strike, why the iron is hot, was a thing for you, but you're saying now. I do remember you saying that you got caught shoplifting. That was middle school. That was middle yep. school. And In then middle the cops school? took what? you home. People do it way so earlier now. So what's the... Oh, no, I, never I mean, it. doing it, like we're talking, I mean, so, so, so you got caught shoplifting from the bodegas from the little corner stores was like a thing. Like yeah. it was just like a regular. So what did you thing. take? What did you take? I don't do it, but it's a thing. Um, from when I got caught. Yeah, yeah. Because those other things were, um, you know, basically like all right, twenty five. Like they used to have the twenty five cent, cent chips yeah. and the quarter waters and all that stuff. That was like a, a you know, you go to the store. That was one of the things you were going to do. <laughs> but, oh. <laughs> um. Like I yeah, said, I I've, I've heard of it. I've heard of it. I don't do it, but I've heard of it. It's happened. It's like people have told me about it. Mm -hmm. like, they just and your school? pick things. And yeah, even in Tacoma. I mean, happened. that was a mm -hmm. that was like how we ate. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't grow up rich, so um, that's how we you ate. Like I would go to the store and have my um, honey well, my honey buns. Like this is like <laughs> you go over there, I go over there. We come in, pocket. All right, <laughs> walk out. That was you're not even ate. gonna buy anything. They'll no be suspicious. Uh, some people might buy something. We come in with a whole bunch of people, so it's not like, you know, you know, <laughs> everybody has to buy something. And even if I did have a quarter, I'd have, I'd come out with a whole bunch of things that I needed and wanted. So, anyways, um. So, you got caught. Oh, yeah. So, middle school, this was like a, uh, like a CD sh shop, um, actually. So, I was with somebody else. So, and... wasn't even something you needed? Uh, no. Um, but more importantly, like, I didn't really get caught. Like, I came, like, because I was like, all right, I'm going to pocket it. And then, you know, both of us walked out. Um, and homeboy uh, is like, hey, you're going out. And homeboy is like, I'm out. And for me, I'm like, oh, okay, you got me. <laughs> so let me go return. So he's supposed to run. And I'm like, all right, let me return your crap so I can go. And he's like, nope, we're going to keep you here. So they um, held me. And then the police came, well, took me back. home. Pretty much. I mean, that's so why I didn't get in steal. trouble. <laughs> you don't get in trouble. Um, oh, okay. So then they. I took mean, trust you home. me. The people that I was hanging out with in middle school were doing way worse mm -hmm. than this type of stuff. So if I if I didn't have the kind of values, um, it was going to be way worse type things that I could have been involved in. But um, thank God for good values. But uh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So they drove me home and. Um, they drove me home. Police um, drove me home, and my dad obviously wasn't there. But by that time, my mom and my grandfather was um, there, and my grandfather saw them, but he doesn't speak English. So um, me and my stupid self, you know, because, you know, like the shock of it. You know, so when you when you go into some shock, your frontal, your, your, the frontal part of your brain is not thinking anymore. So now you're not thinking. And so, and they knew this, the police. So when they brought me to the door, my grandfather and my and Wallace came up and Wallace was about to start saying something. And when he later told me he was going to say, yeah, he got into a fight, which would have been like, mm -hmm. yeah, he got into a fight. Not as bad. But um, he said, but the police officer said, no, let him answer it. Mm. So I'm like, oh, fuck 
yeah, uh, yeah, they caught me stealing. Mm. It's like, oh, like that was the biggest, biggest thing in the world. My mom punched me in my face when she what? found out. She yeah, punched she punched me in my face. My dad, the first time and the last time I ever saw him cry because, you know, like stealing, like he, you know, works day and night to basically try to provide for us all that he can. And, um, you know, that sort of, I guess, stigma in their mind of you're your, the thief was like like a, one of the biggest things. I didn't even think about it that way, um, obviously. But, yeah, he... Um, uh yeah he was when he found out about it he was uh you know cried about it he took me back to the store to apologize and all that stuff so yeah that was um one of the other ones and then there were other bad stuff that i did but i didn't get caught when you're talking about high school i mean the other bad stuff like um i think in, either in middle school or elementary school like i had to so my parents didn't want me hanging out didn't want me playing any sports so i had to basically sign my own um, waiver to play football. I used to hide my pads so I can actually get to play. Um, what else? There's some other stuff. We used to have like a, um, maybe we should. Stop. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> we could be here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're kind of but, bad. But, uh, <laughs> bad. You were a bad boy back then. <laughs> Not, uh, uh, things we're not going to do, right, kids? You've never been bad? No. When no I doubt kid, that. I mean, as a stellar that. when you're child, But like I said, the example. whole point is to be better than I was. See, you guys, hope, thankfully, because my dad worked his ass off and did all these other things, you guys don't have to grow up with the people that I grew up with. Right. And not necessarily even the people, because I, everybody's just... You know, not to put anybody. We're just doing our best yeah, in, under our best. circumstances that we have. Um, you know what I'm saying? And so um, everybody's doing their best under the circumstances. You guys should be grateful, as I am, that you guys don't have to do that. And you're going to be ten times better than we are. And you're going to be bringing in the millions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my last question is, as you look into the future, um... What are some of the things that you wish for your children that will uh, make you feel like you were successful as a father? Um, excuse me. Um, for one, I want them to be happy. That's huge. You know, as long as they remain grateful and happy, that's it's like number one. Everyone, like whatever you're going through right now in your middle, high school, whatever, all of that stuff, everybody comes to one point there are people who fall by the wayside and everybody who is you know who's doing who who has done things for themselves everybody is living all under one roof not one roof but like we're all basically the same so the question is and all of us are going to be seeking our happiness you know because that's the ultimate need and so once you get that then that's the most important the second piece is you know your passion your talent and your tribe. Finding your tribe, the people you feel good about, using your talent and your passion. If you are able to do that and not hold yourself back because of your fears, this idea of who you are, this idea of how people are gonna judge you, but you go out and you pursue it and you allow yourself to love, not love, but actually relish accept, appreciate the discomfort and continue to push until you are where you are, where you want to be and happy, then that's it. Nice. So tribe, talent, passion. PTT. PTT. And happiness. PTTH. No. PTTH. TPTH. Talent. No, talent, you're saying toilet paper. Pro, talent, passion, tribe, and then happiness. Shouldn't it be talent T -H -P -P? plus tribe plus passion? T H P P. Talent T -H -P -P. plus happiness. Why? T I really think it should just be T H T P T H. Why not T H P P? 
No, there's no I think two. There's H one is the result. I think H one G. is the result. So what? We can add PPT. So you will H. say, yeah, P. Okay. All right. Here we go. Okay. Nice. So, <laughs> I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. I'm, I'm right. I'm right. So, I'm right. All right. Well, do you want to say something some, Vivian, oh, before no, Amy takes us out? The last question is that what the um, favorite memory of us? Us together. Oh, that's a good mm-hmm. one. What's your like favorite memory together? of either being a father or of your children yeah, as a children. family yeah. together? What's your favorite memory? Well, first of all, you guys are my favorite people. Oh. Does that include me? Yes. <laughs> we love you too. Okay. Um, Why? What? We're a family. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, shekels. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Okay. Um. Secondly, what well, favorite memory? I mean, we're always together. Like, the um issue will be when you guys leave and start your own families. Bola's already but talking about like we're gonna have a gone. yeah a compound where everybody, all your family is gonna come and live with us. Um, I don't know about the um the guys. Like, we're gonna have to we're gonna have some battles with your husband. Gr- so like that's the battle, okay, right? Favorite memory. So, <laughs> your favorite memory. <laughs> Uh, um favorite memory favorite um what am i saying favorite Favorite. memory damn there's too many um i really like cuba our trip to cuba was awesome um our trip to costa rica was awesome the best trip you weren't even you there. Weren't there for you most know, of it. I, I, but it's so it was me and my it was me and my girls because yeah. I'm a girl dad yeah. as well. Um, and you were there for like five seconds. Everybody. But it was still the best trip. Like the best. <laughs> no, the cruise was the best. The cruise was, was, was the best. I liked the cruise, but yeah, they kind of had some. Bad bad moments. Moments. Bad bad moments. At the cruise? No, the cruise they had, had bad food. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. Are you serious? No, like, the, the well, you guys were eating horrible. the whole no. entire time. Yes, what else would we do? Uh, yeah, There's it was kind of boring. Else. Like, there was a pool that was salt water. Literally, there was a my rock eyes were I went burning. there, like, every day. Exactly. And then what else? There was free ice cream. <laughs> yeah, but we had that. Food. Do you want me to gain 300 pounds? Well, you should have never gotten it. Well, actually, I lost weight after the cruise, so... See, I what happens is, and this is what I was telling somebody else, like, if you eat way too much, eventually you're like, I don't even want to eat anymore. Um, which is, like, because you guys ate whatever the heck you wanted. And that's yeah, we even had eating. midnight snack. Yeah. Oh, I remember <laughs> that. That was tough. And then we left yeah, all those guys dirty like dishes in our too. hotel. And like, it was, was so tough. horrible. <laughs> all right. Well, um, so your favorite, favorite memory, memory have um, been vacation memories, is vacation what you're saying. Vacation memories. The um all every year we do our fan bam Fourth of July. Fourth of July. Those are also Those are very amazing. dope. Bam, bam. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I remember last year. I think um right after um no not last, well I think it was last year. But we went to um Virginia like for his 40th birthday. I think that not for, for, for Father's Day. Oh, yeah, for his yeah. 40th birthday, we went to Virginia and we went out and he missed the skydiving. That was sad. We still oh, went out yeah. to eat. That was like fun and we just like chilled. That was fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah, we done. You should do the yeah, skydiving. Even, oh, you know what was really good too? Like back when we were in Virginia, I don't know if when was born. Then. <laughs> <laughs> when we used to go to, um, so you're what's about the name of that place? Family thing that I was Science even in there. No, I'm talking about the um, Bush Gardens. The Bush Gardens. Bush Gardens. Ah. We need to go. Yes. <laughs> we need to go again. Hiking. Bush Gardens. I also really liked uh, North Carolina when we were out yeah, in North yeah, Carolina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, out, where, where's that place that we there. went to? Where we Kentucky. Kentucky was fantastic. We stayed at that. Uh, what the name was that hotel? The, the hotel Galt was Hotel. Great. The hotel was <laughs> the hotel. fantastic. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, we had some uh, some really good good times. Very nice. <laughs> well, this has been amazing. I think mm. you're an amazing father, as your children will say so as well. Yeah. Yeah, we agree. So, you agree? Yeah. So, any areas Thank of improvement? Um, <laughs> um, his beard. I don't like it. <laughs> you like his beard? Apparently, a lot of people don't like his shirt, but I like it. I like it. Um, okay. You don't like you guys, my beard? I mean, really? it's kind of unruly. Maybe if you like. I'm an I'm unruly boss. I like that. Thank you. I pre- now I'm going to keep it for real. This is kind of both of you, but I think you guys lecture a lot. And it could, like how Daddy said, it was tidbits. You guys do tidbits a lot, a lot. But I think that's kind of both of you, so I guess not we really. We lecture too much. Yeah. Well, it's not Mother's Day, so it's for you. <laughs> Cut it out, Megan. You talk too much. All right. <laughs> so, very good. Cheers. I wish I had some um, 
champagne glasses to do a toast to you, but maybe we'll do it later. But um, yeah, here's to another. So you've been a father now for 15 years. Almost, Almost 15, 15 years. years. Almost 15 years. So here's to another 150 years. Oh. Tenfold um, of happiness, mm -hmm. wisdom being imparted on your children, you inspiring them and their generations, your generations to come and just leaving an amazing, lasting memory and influence um, onto the world. So, well, thanks for what you do. <laughs>